Hi everybody, I'm back again. It's Adel AK, uh, CEO of Think Positive Inc. and also featured teaching physician website. Uh, today we're going to be talking about diabetic ketoacidosis. That's right. Alright, so as we always do, remember guys, we talk about definition, the pathophysiology, causes, clinical features, diagnose. How do we diagnose this? Labs. And treat. Remember, we find, we fix, we live it long. Let's get this part started. Jump on this bandwagon. I'm going to take you through this. So, what is DKA? It's called diabetic ketoacidosis. In medicine, brick works into pieces. Let's start with that. How about that? Diabetic, right? Keto for ketones, acidosis. So, we've got three things going on. Patient. It's diabetic, somehow, somehow, some levels of ketones, and has some kind of metabolic acidosis. I think we're done. Let's go. Nah. Let's pause. The party just started. Are you enjoying this? Don't memorize. Understand. They gave it away already. So, how do we start? Definition. This is a medical problem. This is an emergency. How are we going to find out? The patient has to be diabetic. Type 1 or type 2? Most likely type 1. Remember type 1? They don't have any pancreas making enough insulin. So no. Guess what? What is that problem? There is no insulin. So let's start with that. It's a deficiency in insulin. But we haven't talked about what causes it yet. But right now, I want you to remember the consequences to this. Number one, the blood sugar is going to be a problem. The ketone is going to be out of whack. We're going to explain why that happens. And it's going to be just going what? Metabolic... um. Ketoacidosis. But another big problem is they're going to be dehydrated. How come? Let me now talk about a little bit about the pathophysiology. But before I talk about pathophysiology, let me tell you what causes this. One of the biggest causes we say it's always in diabetic patients. Type 1, very common. Type 2, not so so, but they can get. So let's see. Now you know we can break the word into three pieces and they kind of got to give it away. But hey, you know what? Let's dive a little deeper. So, number one, we said, what can cause this? It's always stress. S-T-R-E-S-S. It's stress. What can stress patients? A lot of things cause stress in our lives. I know you can't pay your bills. You have enough money to go to school. That's stress. Not that kind of stress. In this case, something like sepsis. Oh, that's some badass. Be careful. You know, sepsis. Bacteria in the blood. Bam. Hypertensive, tachycardia, the whole bit. They start looking warm and everything. You get the message. Number two, patient had myocardial infarction. That can cause stress. That was stress to be Jesus out of this guy's. Myocardial infarction. A GI bleed. How about what? The most common of all, infection. Right? That will cause that. Right? Anything that can stress patients, that can put them in any state of stress, these are very common things, infection. Anybody ask you like what can cause DKA, tell them infection. Oh, you walk out looking like a star. GI bleed, wow, that's even taking a whole level. MI, all these things, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But these are the things you want to look out for. Because the patient will be diabetic, they're going to rush into the emergency. It's a medical emergency, bring them in. That's what I do, right? You bring them into the ER, and a pal, they're rushing. What's wrong? <laughs> oh, we find out what's going to happen. I'll tell you the story. Right? So that's what's going to cause it. But, now that we know what's causing it, and we know who's going to get it, the diabetic patient, and we know what's going to cause it, stress. Good. Now let's talk about pathophysiology. I'm all about mechanisms. If you know mechanisms of action of anything, you'll be able to help your patients. So let's jump on the back wagon. We said, number one, they're diabetic. So their blood sugar has to be what? Really, really high. But that's not the problem. The problem is insulin is low. Right? They don't have, they're not making insulin. So it's always that diabetic patient, they forgot to use their insulin. Right? So they have low insulin, their blood sugar is going to be what? Really, really high. High blood sugar. Right? If the blood sugar is really high, the muscles are screaming, I need the glucose. <sighs> well, the 
it's a lock and key mechanism. Remember, insulin is the key that's going to open the door. So with a little bit of potassium on the side, like, uh, you know, let me get a double cheeseburger with Diet Coke, yeah, that kind of thing. You need insulin, right? Remember your receptors? You need the insulin to bind first. When insulin binds, potassium kind of goes into the cell with it, but glucose kind of goes in too. But in this case, the glucose is not going in. It's staying outside. It's piling up. It's piling up. Your body's starving. I need the glucose. But the body says, you know what? If you're not going to give me the glucose, I'm going to make more. So what's going to happen? Your blood, your body automatically, let me just erase this. Guess who's going to kick in? The body's going to think, wait a minute, we don't have glucose. It's going to think you don't have it, but you actually do have glucose. The glucose is very high. So the body says, let's crank up some more glucose. So what will happen? Automatically, your glucagon. Remember who that guy is? Glucagon is the guy that takes glycogen and breaks it into glucose. You will think the body is trying to help you. No, it's not. But now, what are you doing? You're feeding more glucose. But remember, the glucose is not going inside the cell. The glucose is just kind of like, you know, kind of flying, flying around, kind of laying around. The cells are not getting it. So glycogen starts doing that. Then the body's like, wait a minute, I'm still not getting glucose. Remember all this time, the cells are dying. They're like, oh my gosh, I need glucose. I'm dying. I need something. So what does the body do? Ah, the body's smart. If I don't have glucose, it thinks you're starving. So automatically start to crank up ketones. Wait a minute, let, let, let me read back, take you back to what? Biochemistry. <gasps> Ooh, yeah. I know, I got to do that. Because that's why I do these lectures. Body thinks there's no glucose or automatically takes fat, fatty acids, break them into acetyl coenzyme A, which are not going to be forming what? Acetyl acetate or bitter hydroxy butyrate and acetone ketones baby ketones are gonna be out of whack but you know what ketones can be used as energy the body is smart if you're not gonna use glucose it's like I got you I'm gonna make a lot of ketones from fat break it down a little bit of fat the liver is gonna crank them up right there crank up a little bit of glucose since you're not gonna do that, you're not, you're not gonna use the glucose, the brain's gonna start using your you know, ketones, right? The fat can now use ketones. The muscles can use the ketones. The heart can use these ketones because you know what? You gotta keep you alive. But that is not good. That is not good. You know what's gonna happen? Although your body is going through this mechanism, I don't wanna make a mess, and I kinda don't still wanna erase this. So what we're going to do, I'm going to erase this just a little bit, and I'll show you the pathway. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm just going to erase this a little bit. Keep this on the board. Watch this. Low insulin, high glucagon, both of them cause elevated blood glucose, but that's not where your problem is. The problem is... As your blood glucose starts to rise, remember this glucose got to flush down the drain. What's the drain? The kidneys. They're going down the kidneys. They're going down the kidneys. You reach what? There's something called transport maximum is rich. Tmax. Absorption inside the nephrons, remember? Now the glucose starts to spill inside your urine. It starts to spill inside your urine, right? It's called osmotic diuresis. Just remember, diabetics, they always spill sugar in the urine all the time. This is already bad enough. But this osmotic diuresis will cause what? Water to flow, right? You start to lose water because the glucose has high osmo osmotic contact because of the, uh, the sugar. It draws water with it. All of a sudden, the patient becomes dehydrated, volume depletion. How do you know the patient is going to be dehydrated? We will find out. And it remind me because when you check their labs, which we're going to order later, but just for FYI, the BUN is going to be really high. BUN creatinine is going to be high, but the BUN is going to be high. That shows the patient is dehydrated. 
Why? I just showed you the mechanism. Osmotic diuresis. They're peeing it all out. But when we get to clinical features and diagnosis, we'll talk a little more about that. But this is the pathophysiology. Low insulin, high glucagon, elevated amount of glucose, the glucose starts to get out of the body, water follows, you get dehydrated, and bam. So three things. We said diabetic, this is where the diabetic, and guess what? Check the glucose. What do you think is in? It's inside the urine. Right? It's elevated in the blood, you're losing it. It's coming in the blood, you're getting it peeing it out. So it's both elevated in both places, but inside your bloodstream called serum, and also inside your urine. So we have diabetic, keto. Ah, I'm not done yet. What do you think these guys are? They're keto acids. They're called keto acids. All of these three bad boys are keto acids. And they're going to cause you to have metabolic acidosis. Remember when we did the lecture on uh, uh, metabolic acidosis? <gasps> acidosis! Mud piles. Remember M-U-D? Methanol, uremia, right? D-K-A. Yeah, exactly. That's where we're at. D-K-A, right, baby? That's where it is. That's exactly where the problem is. That's how D-K-A causes metabolic acidosis. It's cranking up all these ketones. All these ketones. So, we talk about what causes it. We just talk about the pathophysiology. What is the patient gonna come in with? Remember, they come in, you gotta recognize it. The patient's gonna come into the ER, bam, 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 they come in, what's going on? You gotta take an HMP. You gotta take an HMP. Remember, we take a history. What's going on, man? What brought you into the ER? You're like, she can't really talk. She's not gonna be talking much. She's gonna lie there in pain. She's got me abdominal pain, <gasps> vomiting, I'm nauseous. That's gonna be what they're nauseating, they're vomiting. All right? They come in abdominal pain. The moment you get closer, you're like, did somebody spray paint acetone in the in the air? Who's using nail polish? No, it's the patient. They're gonna be start, you start to smell the breath. The acetone starts to come out of their mouth. They have their abdominal pain, nausea, they have vomiting all over the place. Guess what? They start to lose a little bit of consciousness. You look at their mouth, it's dry. It's very dry. You know why they're dry? I just told you right there. They're dehydrated because they're peeing their brains out. Right? It's all from the blood sugar. That's when you know. Okay. But the key thing that's going to tell you is, hmm, the patient has diabetes. The... the, the the person that brought them in is going to say, oh, do you have any medical problems? Yeah, they have diabetes. <gasps> they just told you the answer. They got diabetes. Guess what? Then you say, all right, so how do we diagnose it? We did a physical exam. Guess what the patient is going to be doing? <gasps> They're hyperventilating. Why? I talked to you about the last lecture. You can click down here. If you click here, you go back to metabolic acidosis part one. When patients have metabolic acidosis, they build up so much CO2, they gotta, <gasps> they gotta breathe it out. So they're gonna be hyperventilating. Hyperventilating, rapid, deep breath, right? Nausea, vomiting, rapid, deep breath, breath of acetone, they're giving you the answer. They're literally giving it away. But hold on for a minute. It's one of my job. My job is to find out immediately what their blood sugar is. So this is the pathophysiology. Let me erase that for a minute. Then, my job is to make the diagnosis. How do I do it? The first thing I want to order, check blood glucose. The blood sugar, right? Oops. Glucose. I prefer glucose. I think glucose is a little more fast. Guess what? Blood glucose greater than 250 